In this video, we are going to be discussing the example, the exercise question 6.24. Um, and yes, we will be doing quite, uh, example and CRD exercise questions related to equilibrium uh, for the next couple of weeks till we're done with it. We're at 24th question. Hopefully, I'll be done with it soon. In the meantime, if there's any concept or any specific uh, question that you need help with, definitely comment below. Also, let me know if you found this video helpful because that definitely keeps me motivated to continue working on this channel. Okay, so this one is related to the chapter of equilibrium. Um, that's the one we're dealing with right now. Uh, so calculate the Gibbs free energy and the equilibrium constant for the formation of NO2 from NO and O2 at 298 Kelvin. So they've given us the temperature and we need to figure out the value of the Gibbs free energy as well as the equilibrium constant. Okay, now they've also given us these three things. These are basically the Gibbs free energy of NO2, NO and O2 respectively. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to first try and figure out the value of delta G, which is the Gibbs free energy. And then we have a relationship, if you remember, between the Gibbs free energy and the equilibrium constant, right? So we're going to use that formula to calculate the value of the equilibrium constant. You can pause right here if you'd like to go back to your textbook and try to find those equations and, you know, try to solve it on your own and then come back to this video. That would be great. That's the reason I tried to tell you what we're doing. In the beginning of the video. So first let's start with calculation of the Gibbs free energy. So the Gibbs free energy for a particular equation is given by the sum of delta G minus of the products minus the sum of the Gibbs free energy of the reactants. Okay, so here the product is going to be NO2 and the reactants are NO and O2. So we are going to be writing the formula. So Gibbs free energy of NO2, which is the product, nitrogen dioxide, um, and then minus sum of the reactants, right? So it's going to be delta G of the NO nitrous oxide plus half because you have the coefficient over here half but and delta g of o2 okay so all we have to do now is substitute the values so here it would be no2 is 52.0 kilojoules per mole minus uh gibbs free energy of night no is 87.0 kilojoules per mole and then you have half into zero kilojoules per mole. Essentially, I know it doesn't matter that you needed to put the half here, but it's very good practice for you to know that there is a half there. Okay, so rather just be safe. So just put half over there and I know it doesn't matter. So half into zero is going to be zero. So we're going to be left with 52.0 minus 87.0 kilojoules per mole. So this gives us a value of minus 35.0 kilojoules per mole. And because I know what's going, we're doing next, I'm going to just convert this kilojoules per mole into joules per mole. So it'll be minus 35 into 10 to the power 3 joules per mole. Okay, so that's what we're having. So we were able to calculate the Gibbs free energy. Essentially, you just use this formula. The next one is calculating the equilibrium constant. So we have a relationship between the Gibbs free energy and the equilibrium constant. And that is delta G is equal to minus 2.303 RT log Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to rearrange this equation. So you're going to get log k is equal to minus delta g divided by 2.303 rt. So r is the gas constant whose value is r equals to uh, 8.314 joules per kelvin per mole. 
that is why we wanted to convert it to joules because it's easier um or you could just do it here it's up to you i just knew what we're doing next that's why i just changed it so it's completely your preference uh and temperature is 298 kelvin so it's been given to us so we're, all we're going to do is substitute the oh sorry substitute the value of oh i must all we have to do is substitute the value of um, okay, I don't know why that happened. Uh, we're going to just substitute the various values that we've just written down and we're going to calculate the value of k. So this is equal to minus into minus 35 into 10 to the 35.0 actually it's very good practice to keep the decimal point because it's not an absolute number into 10 to the power 3 kilojoules per mole uh, divided by uh, 2.303 into r is 8.314 joules per kelvin per mole into 298 Kelvin. So let's start with the units. You and I both know I always love starting with the units. Uh, per mole, per mole, cancel, joules and joules cancel, which is good. We want all of it to get canceled. This means we are getting to the right spot because the equilibrium constant is a constant. So it does not have any units, right? So remember that. So minus into minus equals to plus. So our minus sign is also going to go away in the next step. So we are going to be left with minus 35.0. Oh, <laughs> I just said it's gone. I'm sorry. Okay, minus 30, 35.0 into 10 to the power 3 whole divided by 2.303 into 8.314 into 298. Okay, so um, the next thing we're going to do is start simplifying this. So you have uh, essentially the 2.303 into 8.314 is going to be equal to 35 into 10 to the power 3 divided by 19.147 into 298. Okay, uh, then we simplify this further. 298 into 19.147, 35.0 into 10 to the power 3, whole divided by 95.705.806. Okay, then we're going to simplify this further. So you're going to be this 35 divided by 5705.806 is going to give us 0 0.006134 into 10 to the power 3. Okay, so this is essentially equal to 6.134 as the value of whatever we is equal to log k. Okay, so since I don't want to scroll down, I'm just going to draw a straight line or try to draw a straight line. So log k is equal to 6.134. So we're going to have to take anti-log on both sides. So k will be equal to, when we take anti-log, it's going to be equal to 1.362 into 10 to the power 6. So essentially what we did in this for this question was we use the fact that they've given us the Gibbs free energy of the individual reactants and products. And that was how we were able to calculate the value of Gibbs free energy. If I'm not, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that you probably learned this particular formula in the chapter thermodynamics. Um, and from there, using the relationship between the value of Gibbs free energy and the equilibrium constant we were able to calculate the value of k all you need to know for this particular question is these two formulas that is delta g equals to minus 2.303 rt log k and delta g that is the gibbs free energy is equal to sum of gibbs free energy of products minus that of the reactants in the next video if you're watching it next monday i'm pretty sure we will be doing question number uh, 6.25 but if you end up actually watching it this friday we are going to be talking about the um, strength of acids and definitely check that video out. Also, look at the 
playlist that I have related to this chapter. You might find something that's helpful. Okay, bye.